How are you today? Yeah, I'm really good, thank you. How are you? Very well. Thanks so much for your time. No, thank you for having me. Absolutely. <laughs> so I thought before we start talking about the movie, I was wondering if you could share with us what um, what, what your relationship to horror movies is in general. Yeah, sure. Um, I've had an interesting relationship with horror movies. Uh, they weren't necessarily encouraged in my house when we were younger because my parents are like deeply religious and anything supernatural that didn't champion God at the end was like a no-no. But when I did start watching them, right. um, they, I, I never really, I, I've been looking for a film that truly scared me for a really long time. The last couple of films that scared me strangely were What Lies Beneath, because I watched it and I was underage. <laughs> so like my all little, right. my all child right. mind was just like running away with all the possibilities of what might be waiting for me in bathrooms. Uh, and then paranormal activity, similar to the reason that I explained earlier about how I grew up in a very Christian household. So when in paranormal activity, they started exploring the occult and Satanism and demons haunting, like that was, yeah, that was, that was not the one, which is interesting because films like, yeah, the films like The Omen or the remake of that, or, oh my goodness, there's a film, oh like the exorcism of Mary Rose, I think it's called or something like that, where Legion possesses this girl and she's speaking with seven different voices at the same time. It's like impressive, but it wasn't necessarily like deeply scary for me. So I've been searching for a film for a while that is like gonna make me, gonna keep me up at night, you know? Right. <laughs> so, and you guys uh, had the privilege to, to uh, present his house at Sundance earlier this year, you know, and really mm -hmm. only a few weeks before the world started to change. So I was wondering, yeah. looking back, how much does it mean to you to have had the chance, you know, to present the movie directly to an audience? Yeah, like, it is a shame that we're not going to be able to have massive communities watching at the same time as you would do. Or even if like house parties where you have like 20 people around and watch this film or put it on a projector, the world has changed. So to be able to experience the energy in the room, sharing it with hundreds of people at the same time is a real blessing for sure. Because right. also you never know how successful your film is until you put it in front of an audience. Reviews right. are one thing and it's really nice to know what one person uh, on, in all parts of the world feel about it. But when you're watching it collectively, you can feel the energy and we got a really great response to Sundance. So I'm really grateful that we were able to share it before the world kind of shut down. Right. And Netflix picked it up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a really great surprise because they picked it up before we even we even shared it at Sundance. So wow. um, I think it was testament to the faith they had and the quality of the storytelling that we were doing that they wanted to be a part of um, it, the film's journey before it even went to market. You know, there are so many topics in this movie that I would like to talk about, and it's almost difficult to find out which one first. But there's also, mm -hmm. you know, there are so many tiny little details in the movie that do already say a lot. So, you know, like, like your character tries everything possible to make them both stay in the UK. And, mm -hmm. But he's also willing to kind of give up his cultural habits a bit. And, for example, he wants Rial to start eating with a fork and then stop eating mm -hmm. with her hands. Of course, she doesn't want to give up her cultural habits. Um, so I was wondering, what would you say, um, how, how important it is to really stay true to yourself and to, to really, um, you know, to, to make sure you don't change too much just because others want mm -hmm. you to? I think there's a saying that says, you should always remember where you're coming from on the journey to where you're going. Uh, and I think that's one of the best truths of life, not to compromise yourself um, or because there's nothing to be ashamed of, of your story and your story is unique and important and who you share culture with is, is massively important in no matter where you end up in the world. So yeah, it's important to try your best to, be friendly with the people around you and assimilate into new ways of life, you know, driving on the left, driving on the right side of the road. All of that stuff is super important. And not to alienate yourself from your environment, wherever that environment may be. But I don't think you should ever have to compromise yourself in order to achieve that. And I think that is something that Bol has to learn over the course of the film. 
Right. And you know, one, one thing that really shocked me was when Riel went over to the three guys, the three kids, um, asking mm. about the church. And to see how, how they reacted to her and how they talked to her, it was just heartbreaking because she went over to mm -hmm. them because she was like, okay, they, they share a similar, similar origin or culture, you know, so we understand each other. Um, so I was wondering, how, how, since you were born in London, how crucial has it been in your life, you know, to don't deny um, your origin and to never forget about your ascenders uh, culture? Yeah. It's interesting, like in Yoruba culture of Nigeria, respect to your elders is so important. It's so, so important, regardless of where that elder is in terms of class or affluence, like as long as they're older than you, you must always pay respect. And <laughs> that's, been, that's been so drilled into me and so important to me that um, I've almost embarrassed myself in some situations. Like I remember there's an action that you do to someone who's older than you. As a male, you put your hand to the floor to show reverence. And I remember doing that to my headmaster at school one time for literally no reason. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's how like drilled the culture was into yeah. me. Um, and also like when I'm out on the roads, if I ever see an elderly person or specifically an elderly black person struggling, I will always make sure that I go to help them. And I'm glad that mm -hmm. comes from culture, but I think it's something that we should be sharing regardless, you know? If someone is frailer or in need of aid, we should always hopefully try and be able to help them. Um, but it's just something that was given to me for free growing up in a Nigerian household. Right. And you know, you know what scene really annoyed me in the movie? It was, you know, when, yeah. when a ball went out shopping new clothes and there was this security guy that was like, ooh, I mm -hmm. have to take, a, take an eye on him because he's probably going to steal something or whatever. Mm -hmm. And because, you know, it reminded me of the time when I lived my, with my brother because my brother is from Asia, my half brother. Okay. And so I, I remember the looks, you know, so it, it bothered me more than it bothered him, actually. But mm -hmm. um, so I was wondering, did you ever experience something similar because that's kind of it, it feels like like silent racism you know that, that they, yeah, they yeah, yeah. tell you through their eyes they think about you mm -hmm. um yeah it's really interesting the moment that you find out that you're black or that you're asian or that you're not white you know um and coming from africa where everyone's black I don't think it even registers to Bol that he's being followed by the security guard because he's never had before to be concerned about it. He's never been made to feel other because of the color of his skin before he came to the UK. So I think that moment in the film is really, really important and really interesting uh, for people to pay attention to because whilst we as viewers know that ah, obviously the security guy's following the black guy around because he thinks he's gonna steal something, Bol himself is not necessarily aware of that. And I think that's a really, it's like a defining moment in Bol's journey. And also, has it happened to me? Yeah, unfortunately, it's happened to me loads. Uh, if I started reading off examples, we'd run out of time in the interview. Um, but right. we are all optimistic and hopeful for change. Change in attitude, change in perspectives, change in the way people behave. Absolutely. And, and what, what do you think why why certain people seem to have, you know, prejudices uh, only based on, on appearances. Because we also have, you know, this neighbor in the movie that he is so kind to her and he, he winks her and all that stuff, but she's not interested to get to know him. She doesn't even try. She, she only mm -hmm. wants them to leave again. So what do you think why certain people aren't open-minded? I think there are so many, many different reasons as to why prejudice exists, but it all comes down to lack of empathy, lack of education. Um, and like unwarranted fears, you know, just because and also, yeah, just because you've had a bad experience of life with someone who may look like someone else doesn't mean you have to treat that person badly preemptively, you know. Um, I think, unfortunately, a lot of people are very small minded. And that's what leads to interactions like that. But like I said, we're optimistic for, for change. Absolutely. And speaking of change, I mean, in Hollywood, you know, we're in the past years, there has been a, a, a big change when it comes down to diversity. We see now movies from, from all different kinds of cultures and actors from, from everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, so I was wondering, before, before that change started, 
Did you ever feel like you were not fully welcome in the film industry? Or did you ever feel like you were treated a little bit differently than others? Um, yeah, those are very different questions. I don't think I ever felt unwelcome in the industry because there have been forerunners who have blazed trails for us. Um, people, especially in America, people like Idris, people like um, Chiwetel. And I speak specifically about those two because they are black British men who went over and blazed a trail for us in America. But also in America, you've got legends like Sidney Poitier and Harry Belafonte and Denzel Washington. Like there have been black people I mean, I've only listed black men, but I could go on and say like Viola Davis and Angela Bassett and Halle Berry. There are like lots of black people who have worked in Hollywood. So I never felt like it was a space that I couldn't occupy thanks to their incredible work ahead of me. But do I feel like I was ever treated differently? I think it would be naive of me to say that I hadn't been. But I know that okay. I've also been, I've also benefited from the struggles that the people ahead of me have gone through. It's definitely a lot easier for young black people, men and women coming up in Hollywood, regardless of where they come from in the world, because of the struggles that those ahead of us have gone through. So, I mean, like, I definitely feel as if I'm standing on the shoulders of giants and I'm very grateful to their contributions to the world so that I could thrive in it now. Right. And you know what I love about Netflix is that you really get to see movies and projects from all over the world because um, otherwise you probably we probably will never hear about you know certain movies mm -hmm. or television shows. You really have to look for them, you know. Um, and 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 this platform gives us the opportunity to really dig into other cultures and and, and just mm -hmm. you, know, you can learn so much about other territories, of course. So um, how excited are you that the premiere is is is, is happening globally on on Netflix? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean. What we were saying earlier as to why people form prejudices is because platforms like this haven't always existed. You know, the accessibility to other people's cultures is growing and growing with the advent of the internet and with platforms like Netflix, where we can just say, okay, I want to watch a French film or I want to watch an Iranian film. You know, it's so much easier to access now. So for his house to be a part of that cultural sharing that's happening on the internet and that is being made available globally is so exciting and i hope that our film does invite and encourage people to think and share culture um this is south sudanese and also sort of understand that africa is not a country and that it's a continent made up of thousands of different languages and cultures and this is hopefully very knowingly, I was going to say unwittingly, but it's not. It's very consciously a step to sharing the diversity of blackness in this world. The, the movie's coming out uh, uh, on, on around Halloween, so mm -hmm. I was wondering, um, what's what's your what's your experience with that holiday? Man, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Like I said before, my I grew up in a very Christian household, so like the celebration of all things um, anti-saintly was not uh, encouraged. But, and also one of my friends, a very close family friend has her birthday on Halloween. So we always try to sort of celebrate her birth rather than celebrate the, um, the demons as it were. But I'll never forget one time when I was, I, must, I was younger than 10 for sure. And a boy on my street who was actually younger than me, which made it even worse, knocked on my door for trick-or-treating. And we were told never to open the door because we were not playing trick-or-treats. And I just wanted to see who it was. So I opened the flap and he was wearing this like demon mask, very similar to the demon mask that's available in your emojis. And I was terrified. I thought the devil had come to find me in my house, looking at me through the letterbox. <laughs> His name was Samir. So if Samir ever sees this interview, bro, I'm still thinking about you. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was definitely one of the times I was most scared on Halloween in my life. <laughs> awesome, Shopey. Thanks so much for sharing and thanks so much for your time to go over with this with us. Uh, entirely my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thanks very much. Have a good day.